talking about something working out, I did call a small four bat here and I have a large call button. I think I just go for the, oops, misclick bat. Sure, over bat. Why over bat? So again, we have someone who flats the button and plays 19.94. If he doesn't have a set, I don't get anything, I guess. So uh, I don't need, I mean, can check again and hope he hits a set on the river or at least hits like a queen or something. And this is interesting now. Large bet now. We can hope for pocket fours against those. It doesn't matter what I do. And now if he really has the bluff, I mean, raising just doesn't make any sense. Seven is decent. But this is a weird sizing. All right. Wow. This is a jam here. And I just called a four bet with, uh, oh, we need him to have a set. That worked out quite nicely. Check, check on the flop. While talking about something working out, I did call a small four bet here and I have a large call button. Very large call button. Oh, I want to draw a nice large call button and paint, but here, um, King Jack, I mean, I'm checking back most nut flushes because I want to do that with my ace king, ace of diamonds. Now this one here, I think it's a good one to start stabbing. And that five, six, seven with a king, four of clubs, all kinds of options. I think I just go for the, oops, misclick bet. Uh, I gotta rejoin again now. Replayer plus. Now let's stick to the to the, to the the small bet and hope for him to raise. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was indifferent anyways between block betting and betting and maybe even check raising. So now let's, let's not time out and just Jam it. Not time out, I said, right? So. Hey, undefined beh behavior. Uh, great question regarding the 10 10 deuce 9 board. So, what happened there is I went for a range bet, button versus big blind, and um, villain check raised on that board. Oh, nice. <laughs> what is it here? Ace 8? What? Oh, that was a straight. Oh. Oops. This is like one of the spots where all the poker code members are super happy now, I hope. That's the spot we never want to bluff just because risk reward is just insane and people always have it. So what happens here? I mean, I thought about either betting big or block betting on the turn. I misclicked min bet uh, just because I wanted to adjust the bet sizing but hit the bet button instead. So um, yeah, I think that is fine. So I stick to that line and, and played it as if I did block on the turn. So I go for the block on the river again um, to make sure villain raises an eight. And what happens is that people do not have bluffs here in the first place. And they always have an eight when they do that. And um, yeah, then the problem is if I jam here, that means I'm risking $190 to win like 33, which forces him to fold to something like that like 85% of the time, that's what my math says here. <laughs> so, uh, but people think more like in terms of 50-50, does he have it, doesn't he have it, I don't know, whatever. So it's just super tough to make people overfold there. Disregarding blockers, I could always have the ace of clubs, obviously, um, and rather jam super light for value because as if he's ever playing the nut flush like that, just not really happening. So um, yeah, a super nice spot to be greedy with your value and uh, yeah. And it's super important to not bluff there um, against not strong players, obviously. So let's hope for another check here on that 4-3 deuce 4 board. Um, now on that 5. Shouldn't have too many 6x. Roll to check. I guess I mix here. Lots of block betting um, and some checking of the ace x. Sure, over bet. Why over bet? <laughs> I cannot call ace, I pretty much have always ace x and he targets that with an over bet to make me fall. I don't believe it. That's like, I mean, he's a very strong player. I, I should definitely get a roll for kind of the right frequency there. Uh, but with zero time bank, I didn't want to. I would have hated myself for just snap paying off. 
I'm just thinking about the six acts that I have. I think most of them I play actually check all the way because villain will bet an ace. So I should, uh, but I'm really not sure about the spot. I should be protected. I think it, like, I think at least. Um, and then the overbet does not really make sense. But tough, tough spot. How many sizings would you advise using on the flop turn river for NL50 or 100 when playing or solving? Is it something like one, two, three? And how many sizings do you use when solving? Um, every spot is different there. So whenever it's possible, I try to understand where EV comes from. So whenever it's possible to simplify to one sizing on the flop, I try and do so, right? Like even in the stream today, we had an example where I said like, it's a high frequency small bet and we sh can have some big bets, but I simplify to small bet only or like, I knew in that spot it's not like really an EV difference and just makes my life overall a little easier uh, because the game tree will be smaller and um, I know exactly what I have and what not. So um, yeah, on the turn, I, I mean my single race pot, the standard single race pot, if there's nothing special happening, I, depending on the board, I use one or two flop sizes. Um, and on the turn, I pretty much only use, all, or not only, but always use three turn sizings uh, in my simulations, mainly use two of them in game. Uh, so there is a small one that is only there for special occasions, uh, but I usually have like a normal sizing. I call it normal sizing, which is 75%. And I use an overbet sizing 150, uh, which depending on the situation, it's just my, yeah, I, I can adjust to stack death and so on. And I, I try to really go go spot by spot where, for example, a three bet pot, I know before, when I see the board, I know, do I play half pot only? Do I play 30% and 75%? Do I play some fancy pot bets? Do I cheat sometimes, right? Like play, let's say I range bet, but sometimes check fold might not low or sometimes bet big with like the one hand that prefers to bet big. Uh, that's like the, the so-called, my, my kind of cheating there. Ace queen. Um, against the three bat, half pot C bat from that kind of aggressive guy that played his king 10 weirdly before on a 10 10 X board. So we are just calling down. This is just him telling us he has pocket jacks. I don't know. Just clicking the call button. Awesome river. Aces make sense, obviously. I thought like queens and aces make sense. I block those nicely. It's it's so insane. Why? Just why? Why? Oh, like this is, we just talked about turn size, like sizings in general, right? This board, you can play if you put it in the solver. It's like only big bets, some very big bets, some mediocre. I simplify that. And against some players, I play 50% only. Against some others, I prefer the bigger size. Depends on whether they overfold or, or not. Um, so here, it seems like he has more or less the 50% only button. Now on that queen, well, that improves parts of your range. You can go with two E sizing only, or you can split it between kind of linear sizing, direction all in, or a block bet to give yourself some, some room. You can block bet, block bet, and then there's still some, some room left. But why now opening up like, oh, that looked different in game. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> I just thought he bet like 38. I don't know, look different in game. I thought he used like a very special sizing, but I don't know why go directional in, not directional in to then go directional in. Like, I, I don't know, that is just weird. We're like, his different turn sizing rang some, some alarm bells. I don't think that he does that with like King Jack or something like that ever, just like, won't believe it for a second. It's like kind of the special sizing, which means, okay, usually he has a special hand uh, and I was showing the wrong table. So um, yeah, very, very, very weird, All right? So, I mean, obviously I'm stacking off ace queen, but uh, it's like, okay, now he jams, he has aces, nice hand, but why that, that sizing pattern where he, he really shows me, hey, something here on that turn is special. I'm like, okay. Down here, uh, we have me open raising, uh, Mike from whatever, uh, three betting, and then someone cold calling. I would love to lead that spot now, but unfortunately with that recreational player, I cannot do that. 
Um, now, ace queen here is something there. I'm the one with most nines. A pretty damn good hand. Just go big. Hmm. Maybe check check wins. Might still be king queen and ace queen. I don't know how bad he is after overcalling there. So uh, check check. Hope for the best. Oh, set of tens. That is strong. Then we got the wrong river. All right, let's play fancy correctly and sometimes call, sometimes jam that ace five suited. I think I don't want to do the jam, but let's do the call. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ever played with JVL star? I played a lot with him. He's very good. So those four by pots are kind of special. Obviously calling is totally fine as well. But here it's like, I have lots of medium pockets. He has like better pockets or just random two overs. And um, yeah, this is how that works. Just like min check raising so I can add bluffs. I don't really have hands that clearly want to call and then get outdrawn and so on. Uh, so I want to charge villain for that. And now I think we have all kinds of options. I'm checking this one here. And the river 10. King. <laughs> Don't need the nuts to bluff catch, so I rather bet myself. Was just thinking about, I think like check can be fine as well. I need to work on my four bet pots, I'm really unsure. Ace king high, so seems like that was a good decision. <laughs> 